Okay friends, it's time to get started on our hood release cable. Firstly, I like to start on the outside, right at the hood latch right along here. If you were to look along the back side, you're going to find where your cable is supposed to connect onto it. Right along this area here, there's a little tab. If you pry this away a little bit, you can pull the cable right out. Now at this point, we'll remove the cable from the latch itself. There we are. There's a little mounting point right along here, so you want to make sure you slide it out of there as well. Now we're going to use a plastic trim tool and we're going to come in between the grill and the body of the truck. Now if you follow that cable, you're going to find two more mounting points. There's one located right here and one located right there. I'll start with this one out here because it's easiest to see. Just get in between, pry it, and it separates. Do the same to the other. Go ahead and grab the cable and relieve it from its mounting points. Okay, so now that we have that off there, the next thing we need is either a nice amount of string or even some nice heavy wire. I'm going to use the wire because it's less likely to break, and I'm just going to kind of tie it around the end here. The reason for that is because we're going to get inside the truck, and we're going to start removing things from in there. Once we get the handle separated, we're going to go ahead and draw it out and through the body of the truck. I want to have this string on here, or wire in my case, because I want to draw it through, and then I'm going to be able to pull the new one through using the wire. Now that we have the cable relieved from all these points right here, let's follow along this area. It's going to go right behind your washer fluid tank, so we're going to remove this mounting bolt right there. Now we can move this around a little bit. Next, we need to remove the air box from the truck. To do that, I'm going to loosen this clamp right here, and then there should be a mounting nut located right down here. Ours is missing, but if yours is there, go ahead and remove that as well. Remove this from the air box and then lift the air box up and out. Okay, now the next thing we need to do is go ahead and lift this up so I have something to grab onto. We'll pop it up and move this out of the way. Right down in here, you can see that there's a hidden clip. Let's go ahead and remove that. Now inside the truck, what we need to do to be able to access this area here is remove this side trim panel. I'm going to use some trim tools. I'll just slide right underneath it like this and then pry it up. Let's get this out of the way. Now let's separate this from the body itself. Just get in between. All right, slide that out of the way. Now with the trim panel off of there, we have a nice clear view of the mounting points for our assembly here. The only problem is if you were to follow the cable down along this way, you're going to notice it leads behind the e-brake mechanism. So that means that we're going to have to relieve the e-brake mechanism from the body of the truck. We're going to remove this panel. Go ahead and grab onto that panel and carefully remove it. Okay, so now that we have the shield out from down along here, we have a nice clear view of everything for the e-brake mechanism. You're gonna find three mounting bolts. There's one right here, one located over on this side, and then there's one hiding up along the top there. Right next to the one that's up along the top, there's also a wire. I'm just gonna disconnect that wire so we don't put a tug on it. Check it, make sure you don't see any funny colors. Assuming it looks good, we'll set it aside. Now I'm gonna start removing these bolts. Now this upper one up here is actually a nut. Now I can move this completely around and it gives me plenty of room to remove my hood release cable. Now let's move along to removing these two mounting bolts. Now we can continue on to removing this from the body of the truck. Real quick, I just want to remind you, you want to make sure you have a string down on the other end because as we draw this through, we want to be pulling the string through as well. That's going to make it much easier to put this back in. Alright, so here's our cable. Let's go ahead and get this off of here. There it is, friends! Now let's come up and in between here, separate this, remove this release cable. Now we can grab onto this assembly and pull it down and out of our way. 
All right, now looking up at the firewall, you can see where the hood release cable needs to go through. So now that we have our wire dragged into the actual passenger compartment, the next thing I wanna do is tie it onto the end, right along this lip right here. You wanna make sure that this is nice and tight because we're gonna be drawing it through the firewall and then of course through that left front fender and then out to the front. After you have it nice and tight on there, we're gonna continue on to wrapping it with some electrical tape. That way there, this doesn't potentially go down like that and get caught on something along the way. So now that I have that tape, so it's coming all the way up here, I have nothing hanging off of this. You can tell I have a nice smooth curve so it can go through the firewall. I'm gonna go back up to the front and I'm gonna gently tug on the wire. As I do that, it's gonna be drawing this up and through the firewall, through that front fender, and then hopefully up to the front where we can mount it to the latch. Awesome. Now I'm gonna unwrap this. So now we're just gonna run this down along the direction it needs to go, all the way to where it's gonna connect into the latch. Now for this part, I wanna make sure that I push the spring down towards the actual cable, so I have plenty of slack along here, and we're gonna put it into its clip. Slide it right down inside there, let the spring go, and then just ensure that it's definitely clicked in. If it moves around too much and it feels like it wants to fall out, just squeeze that clip down a little bit. So I'm just gonna line this up with where it needs to go on the latch and then push it down and in there. Once again, make sure it's completely secured. Now let's follow it along to the rest of its securing points. I'm just gonna open these up. We'll slide the cable into where it needs to go and then lock it in. Now let's come down along here. We'll do the same thing for this one. Slide it in, make sure it's latched. Now just double check everything. Make sure that it's running along the way that it should. If it looks like it's gonna get bound up on anything or it's peeling away from someplace, just try to secure it. You can even use some wire ties if you have to. This looks great, so let's continue. Now let's put our washer fluid tank back in. You're gonna notice that you have a couple little nubs that need to sit down and into the wheel well. We'll just slide it down and in. Make sure that it feels like it's secured. We'll put in our bolt and then we'll snug it up. <laughs> double check it, perfect. Now it's gonna be time to put our air filter box back in here. When we bring it down, we wanna make sure that we slide this underneath this area here. So I'm gonna come in at an angle, slide that down and under, put this into its mounting areas down along here. We'll come along, along this area, put in our air intake hose. When you do this, you're gonna notice that your air intake hose has double layer. You wanna make sure that you have one area going on the inside and then the outer portion going along the outside. After that, we'll tighten up the clamp. Once you have this so it's bottomed out, snug it up. Now you should also have a mounting bolt down here. So of course you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have that stud lined up. Put that down and on there. And of course put on your nut. Now let's put our grill back together. We've got our little push tabs. You wanna line those up with their corresponding holes. Once they're all lined up, go ahead and carefully press this in and latch it. Perfect. Now back inside the passenger compartment of the truck, the next thing I wanna do is just add a little bit of lubricant along this area. The reason why I'm putting lubricant here is because this is gonna to have to go through the firewall. So if we can lubricate it, it's gonna slide in much easier. I'm just gonna push that all the way up to the firewall, get it lined up, and then I'll force it through with my pry bar. Or with my hand, slid right in. Perfect. Now we're gonna mount our handle to the body. If you were to look right along here, you're gonna find two small holes, kind of diagonal. Let's go ahead and line up those bolt holes with our handle itself, put the bolts through, start them in, and then we'll snug them up. Now let's get our e-brake mechanism back in here. A couple things to pay attention to is we're gonna of course have to connect in our wire up here. If you forget that, you're gonna have a red brake light on on the dash. And we're also gonna have the release lever that's gonna come across here. So once we get it mounted in, we'll connect those in as well. And move that release wire cable, slide this in. Up along the top is where you're gonna have the stud that this needs to rest on so we can put the nut on there. Now I'm gonna start on the nut. Now our two mounting bolts. Now that we have all those nice and tight, let's continue on putting on our release cable. I'm just gonna put the cable through along here and then we'll clip it in. Once you have it lined up, just press it right in. Make sure it's secured, you don't want this falling off. Now let's do the wire. Double check it to make sure it's secure. Now it's time to go ahead and get our shield back up on here. We wanna make sure that we reconnect this in right here. Listen for a click, give it a nice tug. We also have our emissions port here. Go ahead and slide it right through this area and then we'll grab it from underneath, put in our mounting screws. Now we're gonna go ahead and put this up. If you look at this area right down along here, you can see that it has an area for a stud to go through. 
Looking underneath the dash, you can also see a stud. Let's go ahead and line those two up. I'm just gonna slide the stud right through the little piton area. We'll line this up and put in all of our mounting bolts. Let's go ahead and snug these up. If you were to look at the back side of this, you're gonna find a push tab and then a couple areas that you're gonna wanna line up along the way. To put this in, of course, we're gonna to have to put our hood release through here. That's gonna repop the hood again, so just keep that in mind. I'm gonna come in low, slide it underneath this area over here. We'll slide that right up. Now we can bring this over and we're gonna push it in with our push clips. Make sure it's secured. You don't want this flapping around while you're trying to drive. Of course, make sure everything's the way it needs to be. If you happen to push down on this, just go ahead and release it. So now we're gonna do this side trim piece. You're gonna notice that there should be some areas that push into the push clips that are in the body of the truck. I have a couple of them coming right along here. So I'm just gonna to try to line everything up and then we'll snap it in. Get this one lined up. Since the hood pops, let's go ahead and lift it up and then reclose it. Double check just to make sure it's completely secured and then down the road you go.